Hello everyone, my name is Jeroen van Mai, and in this talk I will explain our work on a self-organizing low Earth orbit small satellite constellation to provide ubiquitous connectivity for 5G machine type communication and Internet of Things applications. This work was a collaboration between IMAC, University of Antwerp and Antwerp Space. It also received financial support from the European Space Agency, ESA. The traditional way of providing long-range wireless connectivity for Internet of Things devices is through low-power wide area networks, or LP1s. They achieve full coverage by deploying a sufficiently dense set of terrestrial base stations. However, placing base stations is very expensive. You need to find a suitable location, usually on top of a tall building, that needs to be rented. You need to connect the base station to the operator's core network, and many of them are needed to provide full coverage over a large area, such as, for example, the European continent. As an example, this map shows you the coverage in Europe of the Sigfox LP1 network. It is a very popular technology for IoT connectivity, and is generally considered to have very good coverage throughout Europe. But as you can see, it still doesn't cover remote areas such as oceans, mountain ranges, and economically less interesting regions. A promising solution is to provide global IoT connectivity through Low Earth Orbit or LEO satellites. LEO satellites are an attractive alternative to the traditional geostationary satellites. While these geosatellites cover a large area of the Earth's surface, they are much further away and therefore result in a significantly higher latency and packet loss. As LEO satellites orbit relatively close to the Earth, usually a few hundred kilometers away, many of them are needed to provide full global coverage. As such, we require a large constellation of hundreds or even thousands of satellites. Moreover, these LEO satellites are not always in range of a ground station meaning they cannot directly transmit the data they receive from terrestrial IoT devices to the cloud backend server. This results in large delays. To solve this, intersatellite links are needed that allow the data to be sent over multiple hops to the internet via the ground earth station or GES. As a first step towards a global IoT satellite network that provides low latency guarantees, we developed an IoT satellite architecture. It consists of two main layers. First, the ground layer, which consists of all the terrestrial devices, and two, the LEO layer, which consists of a large constellation of low Earth orbit satellites. On the ground, we have our IoT devices that transmit data over the satellite network. We also have the application servers that are connected to the internet. The satellites are able to transmit data over the internet via the Ground Earth Station or GES. The satellites are deployed in different planes. Each plane consists of a number of satellites that are connected via stable intra-plane satellite links. Moreover, Satellites can communicate between planes through interplane links. These links are less stable and appear and disappear over time as the satellites move around the Earth. When a satellite moves over a GES, it can temporarily set up a GES link to offload its data. An important challenge here is to design flexible and cheap LEO satellites that enable both intersatellite communication and communication with the ground. And here you see a schematic representation of the communication interfaces of such a LEO satellite. For simplicity, we are assuming only two intersatellite links in this work, or ISLs, with the neighbors within the same plane. However, everything I will present can be trivially extended to multi-plane satellite constellations by adding additional intersatellite link interfaces. Our work focuses on these intersatellite links and how to properly configure and reconfigure them in face of failures. In our design, 
The ISLs are full duplex wireless links that use continuous modulation. As the transmitter and receiver antennas are directional, the probability of interference from other sources is negligible. However, these intersatellite link interfaces are prone to self-interference. As a consequence, the satellite should never use the same frequency channel for transmission and reception. In the example shown here with two intersatellite links per satellite, this translates into the following four inequalities. What do they mean? Specifically, it means that the first intersatellite link transmission or TX interface cannot use the same channel as the first ISL RX interface or the second ISL RX interface. The same goes for the second ISL transmission or TX interface. As I mentioned, a global constellation would consist of hundreds or even thousands of satellites. As such, as such, the process of selecting a proper channel for each satellite should become automated as manual satellite um, configuration is too time consuming. Moreover, satellites may fail, forcing others to adjust their orbit and connect to new neighbors. So reconfiguration should be automatic as well. And to enable such a self-organizing small satellite network, we developed an automated ISL channel establishment procedure. I won't show you a formal flowchart of our developed algorithm, but let me explain how it works by way of an example. When a TX link is not connected, the satellite will try to find a new valid channel for it after a random backoff expires. The goal of this backoff is to avoid that all satellites will try to connect all of their transmission interfaces at the same time, which can lead to deadlocks. Since this channel selection problem can be formulated as a map coloring problem, the four color theorem tells us that at most four ch channels are needed to be able to find a valid solution for the entire satellite network. When the backoff expires, satellite N will select a valid available channel, meaning a channel that's not currently used by any of its RX interfaces, and attempt to transmit a channel request message on that interface. In this case, satellite N selects the red channel and sends a channel request to satellite N plus one. In the meantime, all the reception interfaces or RX interfaces of each satellite listen for a certain period of time, referred to as the cycle interval, to each of the available channels one by one. Available channels means channels not currently in use by its TX interfaces, as these would not be valid channels to use for reception. However, if in the meantime the neighboring satellite N plus 1 also assigns the red channel to one of its TX interfaces, they will obviously not find a valid channel assignment, since they are both trying to use the same channel for transmission. When cycling through possible channels for its RX interfaces, Satellite N will now skip over the red one and go immediately from the gray to the green channel. This will result in a deadlock. And to address this problem, a restart timeout timer is used. After this timer expires, the satellite assumes it cannot find a valid solution and will change its TX channel to a different, still available one. In this case, Satellite N will switch from the red to the green channel and continue transmitting channel request messages. Now a match will be found and satellite N plus one successfully receives the channel request. The associated TX interface on satellite N plus one will also try to establish a connection, but will send a channel response message rather than a channel request message back to satellite N. Once the receiving RX interface of satellite N listens on the red channel, the channel response will be successfully received and the ISL has set up a bidirectional connection. 
This process runs in a fully distributed manner on all ISLs of all satellites and will eventually converge. As we use a restart timeout that restarts the entire pro process, deadlocks are avoided. And let us take a look at how well this algorithm performs. We implemented the proposed LEO IoT satellite architecture in the NS3 network simulator, where we simulated a single plane constellation consisting of 10 satellites. These satellites were flying at an altitude of 600 kilometers, which resulted in an ISL propagation delay of 14.4 milliseconds per hop, a throughput of 1.3 megabits per second, and a frame error rate of 10 to the minus sixth. Moreover, the channel acquisition time, which is the time it takes for a satellite to switch from one channel to another, was 80 milliseconds. And on the right, you can see the results. They show the total time to establish a connection on all the ISL pairs in the entire constellation as a function of the restart timeout. This restart timeout determines how fast a satellite will reset the channel on its TX interface if no solution is found, so if no connection is established. Here it shows that if this timeout is too low, below 200 milliseconds, the satellite will restart the process too fast, even when a valid solution still exists, which will increase the convergence time. Similarly, for a very high timeout of over 400 milliseconds, the convergence time will also increase because the satellite will get stuck in deadlocks for too long. The different lines represent different packet intervals. This is the interval at which the satellite will send channel request messages. Here is shown that the lower the better. Taking this all into account, the optimal configuration is achieved for a restart timeout of 200 milliseconds and a packet interval of 10 milliseconds. This results in a total convergence time of about 3.2 seconds. And this brings us to the conclusions of my presentation. We showed that LEO satellite constellations are a promising solution to provide global IoT coverage in hard to reach areas where terrestrial IoT networks are not available. Due to the sheer size of these constellations, they will need to have the ability to self-deploy, self-organize and self-repair in case of failing satellites. As a first step towards such a self-organizing LEO satellite constellation, we developed an algorithm for self-organizing ISL establishment among satellites. We showed that the algorithm is able to establish all links on a single plane constellation within three seconds. As a next step, we plan to extend this work toward larger multi-plane constellations consisting of over 100 satellites. That brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention.